I mentioned having met with Eli Wiesel. And when I went to meet him, one of the questions, he said, would you have any questions for me? I said, a million of them, but I only have a half an hour to be here. I said, what do you what do you feel about the role of therapy and pastoral counseling and all that when it comes to one who's lived through the unimaginables? And I, I didn't have to describe my, my language. I didn't have to define unimaginables. And he said something I'll never, ever forget. You may have heard me tell the story in, this, in one of these CC events. He said, the, the work in being with, with someone, when you sit with someone who's been through the unimaginables, the only response is a moral one, M-O-R-A-L, moral. I said, in all due respect, Dr. Wiesel, I don't understand what you mean. It's a moral response. He said, do you have a moral obligation or responsibility to just be as present as you can in the absence of words, the absence of anything, technique, to just sit there? And then again, I recall, you know, so many times in my office, before I ever heard of Wiesel, whatever, there'd be times when the room is just swirling, you know, when somebody's... When, when that field is reconstellated, the trauma. Yeah. And I would literally hold on to the bottom of my chair because you feel this thing just swirling and you, you know you want to take off with your own manic defenses or their manic defenses and would hold on to the chair to just try to say, you know what, I'm not running. Mm. You do it by behavior, not the words. The words ultimately become cheap. You know, they, they become cheap. It's what you, you do by your experience. But when he said to a moral response, I said, my, how, how brilliant, how brilliant. And it's not from the head. He meant to just sit with, not just, but to sit with somebody, to have the courage to sit with somebody who's maybe lost a child, lost a parent, who's seen the, bru the brutal assaults from one parent to another, to see the, uh, a body ravaged with, with whatever. I mean, this is real life, and and I know we don't want to look at it and talk about it, but I tell you, the, the response we had to the trauma program last year, we have more responses every week. People say it's so affirming to hear these words because I know it's real. People would say, and and I and I had every so many therapists trying to tell me it's it's going to go away, it's going to get better, meditate it away, levitate it away gyrate or whatever and all those things are wonderful and relevant but unless there is that I'll call it Wiesel's moral attitude that says just shut up for a minute this person lost their mother or their father when they're five years old this person lost their child shush be quiet for a minute enter that moment of, of hell profundity and hope to God there can be that glimmer somewhere of light coming in again that they don't want to enter the grave with that deceased parent or or child which is what happens that's the pattern the universal archetypal pattern responses and that's the other thing we've i've been looking at really intensively that there are these responses that are not personal of course it's your personal experience but when you see so many people that have been through similar experiences react similar ways i mean look all the groups children of alcoholic parents and children of this and children of that and Whatever. See, you had that too. Your parents, oh my God, you have that tendency. And, and you realize, yeah, because it's that archetypal field that begins to be so strong that it begins to eclipse individual life and discernment. That's why I think the an archetypal approach is so meaningful to this work.